Welcome to the first video of section two. Section two could be called How Scientists Measure. And this first one is an introduction to scientific measurement. So we're going to start with some definitions. So what is a measurement? It is officially dimension, quantity, or capacity of an object as determined by comparison with a standard, or you can use it as a verb, and it's the act of obtaining the values as defined in one. And what's a standard? It is some dimension, quantity, or capacity where the value is arbitrarily set. So what does this all mean in real English? Well, let's take a look at the meter. In the 1660s, the meter was defined as 10 millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. So that defined what a meter was, and then you could compare something to that distance. That would be a measurement. In the 1870s, the meter was changed to the length of a platinum iridium bar that was kept in France. This was known as the reference bar, and if you needed to calibrate your meter stick, you could theoretically bring it to France, compare it to the bar, and if it was the same length of the bar, you had a meter stick. In 1983, the definition was changed to how far a beam of light travels in one 299,792,458th of a second. Now, the important thing to get out of this lecture about measurement is that there are two parts to every measurement. There is the number and there is the unit. You need both. For example, how long is this Sharpie? It's up against a ruler that measures in millimeters. We can see that it's 16 long, but 16 what? Well, it turns out that here it's centimeters. So we would say that this has a measurement of 16.0 centimeters. Here we have a flask on a scale. We can see the number. It's 77.7, .7, but 77.7 .7 what? The unit here is grams. So this flask weighs 77.7 .7 grams. The labels matter. Here's an example of where the labels matter. I walk into class and I ask to borrow $10. You give it to me. The next time I see you in class, I put this on the, your desk and say, well, thank you very much. I've now paid you back. You take a look at me and go, are you serious? And I go, yeah, of course I am. You gave me 10. I gave you 10. You then look at me and say, no, I gave you $10. You gave me 10 cents. It's not the same. Labels matter. So when you're looking at this, you see that it's 73.4. 73.4 what? Gigaliters? Is it 73.4 imperial gallons? No, it's 73.4 milliliters. The labels matter. The next important point is that all measurements are inexact. This means that no measurement is exact. If somebody looks at you and says, I can tell you exactly how much something weighs, I can tell you exactly how long something is, they may think that they are telling you the truth, but in actuality, they're mistaken. The last digit of any measurement is an estimation. And it's important to note this because this is how you have to write it. 10 grams is not the same as 10.0 grams, which is not the same as 10.00 grams. The number of decimal points you go to tells you how precise the equipment is. So a quick little video. What I have here are two scales. The one on the left measures to the tenth of a gram or to one decimal point. The one on the right measures to the hundredth of a gram or two decimal points. Both have been teared to zero. I want to place a flask on the first one and you see that it measures exactly 117.5 grams. But the last digit is not exact, because now if I come over here, it weighs 117.51 grams. If I had a scale that went to a thousandth of a gram, then it would be even slightly different. The last digit is never exact. So if you are using a device such as a ruler or a graduated cylinder, that uses a linear scale, then what you need to do is to read it to one decimal point beyond the markings. So for example, we take a look at this graduated cylinder. We see that the markings are in milliliters. I can see 70, 71, 72, 73, 74 milliliter lines. I notice that the line of the water is between 73 and 74 milliliters. So I know that the measurement will be 73 point something. Here the line is really close to the 74, so I would say that this is 73.9 milliliters. If you're using a digital scale, you must use all the numbers and must report all the numbers. So here, this weight is 10.00 grams. This tells me that your scale is capable of measuring to the hundredth of a gram. It is not 
10 grams. And in the next couple of videos, you'll learn why this is important. So to review about measurements, measurements have two parts, the number and the unit, and the labels are very important. A linear measuring device, you read to one decimal point beyond the markings and report it that way. On a digital scale, you want to record all the numbers, including all of the trailing zeros. And that's it for the introduction. There really are no worksheets for this, but shortly you will have an activity that involves scientific measuring.